Hello, everybody, and welcome to Life Questions, a program that seeks to provide you with a biblical perspective on life in the 21st century. It's always interesting to see how the Bible, though written thousands of years ago, provides us with life's solutions for this modern day world. Each week, we look at the questions that you, the viewers, send us and then pass those on to a panel of local pastors for careful and prayerful review. Our guest pastors are with us today to address your questions. Let me introduce them to you. We have with us Pastor Rich Reiki of the Delphus Trinity United Methodist Church, Pastor Bill Mackey of Zion Lutheran Church in St. Mary's, Ohio, Pastor Mark Bird of Revive Ohio, headquartered in Anna, Ohio. Rounding up our panel today is Pastor Ryan Wright. He is the youth pastor at Grace Point Church of the Nazarene in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you all with us today. Nice Good to be here. Good to be here. Now, Good as we take a look at the questions that have come in, here's one I wanted to address with you. This issue was also addressed about, oh, maybe two or three weeks ago with another panel. And um, with the prevalence of um, homosexuality and it being such a controversial issue in the world and in the church, I wanted to get your take on this. Here's a, a question that came in. I knew my son was gay at, the, at a very young age uh, by the toys that he chose. He went through high school gay, college, and jobs, still gay, always will be. So many churches of Christ will not accept him. My husband and I are Christians. We know that Jesus would never turn him away. When someone is born gay, it makes me sad that he can't feel comfortable in a church. Same reaction he has had his whole life, a feeling of not being accepted. He is no different than anyone else, and we are all saved through grace. I feel that the church of Christ should welcome everyone. Okay, what's your take on this, John? Um, I'll say, first of all, if they were sitting youth in pastor, my office, yeah, youth, I'm a youth, youth pastor, pastor, so this okay. is a situation I have, uh, that I deal with a lot. Um, and the reality is, if they were at my church, I would look them in the eye. I would want to hear their story. I'd want to hear the pain, the hurt. Um, I'd want to hear everything from them and let them know that, um, do, do I accept you? Do I love you? Yes. Does Jesus love and accept you? Um, yes. But the thing is, is that Jesus never leaves us where we're at for any of us. And so um, I come from a tradition where I believe that the Bible says and the historical opinion of the church has been that the practice of homosexuality is a sin. However, I'll also be the first one to admit that sometimes the church has treated the LGBT community as enemies to be fought against instead of people to love in Jesus' name. I heard a story one time of a guy who fell down a hole and a pastor came by and wrote a prayer and threw it in. And the guy said, can somebody really help me? And so he screamed out and a city planner walked by and said, um, oh, you know what? I'm gonna do, I got a 10 step plan to get rid of holes. Let me write this in and hopefully get your vote. And he put it down the hole and the guy looked at it and knew it didn't help and the city planner walked away. Then somebody came and uh, looked down the hole and said, oh, I'll help you. And he jumped down in the hole. The guy who was in the hole at first looked at him and said, um, you idiot, now we're both stuck in this hole. And he said, well, yeah, but I've been down here before and I know the way out. The task for the church is to be honest that we all have experienced sexual brokenness. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, sexual brokenness, the scripture talks about it in lots of different ways. But my heart is for the church to be honestly proclaim the word of God. And that when I came to Jesus, did he accept me for who I was? Absolutely. Am I glad that I went to church and they, t they didn't tell me about all the sins I was committing. They didn't tell me um, everything I did wrong in my life, but they told me that Jesus loved me and could forgive me. And then when I experienced Jesus' forgiveness, they, they were so kind and patient as Jesus began to transform my life and community. And so to their son, I would want to say that if Jesus, if we're going to make him first in our life, if he truly did rise from the dead, and I believe he did, then what we're looking for out of you is not morality, is not for you to fit Ryan Wright's set of rules. We're looking for resurrected life. And if Jesus is my king, he has things about my sexuality that need to change. I'm a happily married man. 
I, I, regardless of whether or not how happy I am, I guess I should put it this way, I don't have the option to lust after women. There's a lot of heterosexual sins that the Bible talks about. Mm -hmm. And so many times the church has, has talked about homosexual sins and not heterosexual sins. Mm -hmm. And we need to talk about the whole word of God. And so I have ministered to students as a youth pastor who know my biblical stance on homosexuality, but they know that I love them. And so they've kept coming to youth group. They know that I care about them. Um, and the reality is, is in our day and age, do you have the option, maybe not in your community, but somewhere there's gonna be a church that says homosexuality isn't a sin and they'll have reasons for that. Um, and the reality is, would it be easier for your son to go to one of those churches who tells them that homosexuality is no problem? Would it be easier? I think so at first. But the problem is, is I would never ever want to love someone by walking them away from Jesus and what he says in his word. Yeah. And so even though it might be easier at, at, at first, all of us would love to go to a church that tells us everything about us is right all the time. I want that. I never want anybody to challenge me. The reality is, is when my brother in Christ looks at me with love and says, hey, this isn't good for you. Let's go to another place. Jesus has something better for you. That's a gift. Even though it hurts, it's a gift. But I understand with the issue of homosexuality. This is something he's obviously been feeling as long as the family can remember. Mm -hmm. And so there is pain and there is hardship. And I just have to believe that, that Jesus is so much greater that if you get enough of him, you'll want to lay that down. All right. Um, Gentlemen, please add to this discussion. Well, I appreciate the heart that Ryan brought on an individual basis. Um, the reality is people who call themselves Christians are not of one mind in this matter. It's already split Presbyterian denominations, Episcopalian denominations, sure, sure. Lutheran denominations, my own denomination, the United Methodist Church is, we're process. on the verge of a major split. Uh, our general conference just got postponed a, another year because of COVID, but we're going through that and it's going to happen. Right. Uh, it's going to happen, meaning? Meaning there will be a split in our denomination right. over this issue. Right. And it really, and it's, well, to be fair, it's been made about this issue, but it has nothing to do with this issue. It has to do with, are we going to conform to scripture mm -hmm. or are we going to interpret what we want it to be because it's mm -hmm. less offensive to our lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is we're, we're conforming to the culture rather than being distinct and unique. It used to be that the Jewish faith, you know, the people that God spoke to and early Christians, mm -hmm. the whole point was that you would be distinct, that's that you right. would stand out, yeah, that you would right. look different than the culture because you were marked by God and you were yeah. called to be something different. You were called to be holy and set apart. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the call that we would be conformed to Christ's likeness. One of the passages in scripture that speaks about this is, is Romans chapter one. And, uh, you know, some of it talks about that they were given to depravity in their in their conduct, but it but it really starts with their mindset. If you look at, um, well, I'll start at verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from among heaven against all ungod all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Uh -huh. So as soon as I say I'm not going to listen to what God says, but I'm going to do what I want to do and that's the standard by which I'm going to dr judge right and wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm in trouble mm -hmm. because I've set myself up. And I learned this years ago. We've been talking about Emmaus and Via de Cristo. And, and the, I learned this long time ago. At the center of every sin is I. Yep. Right. It's idolatry. Yep. It's I've made myself judge. I've made myself ruler. I've set myself up. It's what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden. It's been every sin ever since. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when we deny the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For in his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. darkened. Claiming to be wise, they, they became, became fools. fools and exchanged the glory of immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. And that's just not about bowing down to an idol or, or uh, some other false god, but it's any god of our making, any yeah. ideology, mm -hmm. yes. anything, any view of God, regardless if we use the same name, Jehovah, Yahweh, Lord God, Jesus, any image that we have of that God that doesn't conform to this mm -hmm. is a false God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
It, I'll share a story, Bill, that uh, the Lord gave me about this issue. I uh, pastored where we had a homosexual uh, man in our church, and uh, we loved him every week. We loved him, accepted him, embraced him, but we clearly articulated, just like uh, Pastor Rich said, uh, what the truth was. We loved him with the truth. And the Lord gave me an analogy on this and said, uh, well, let's move it away from homosexuality because the LGBT community says this. Well, why are you just picking on us and why are you just singling us out mm -hmm. as the church, right? And mm -hmm. focusing on this. And so the Lord gave me a, an analogy of this and it said this. So if you had a friend, a, a, a dearly beloved friend, and you walked into a store and you knew they were a kleptomaniac, they couldn't stop stealing, and you actually saw them take something and put it in their coat in an attempt to steal, would you try to stop them from doing that? And if so, why? Why would you try to stop them? Well, we, we know with the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal, right? So mm -hmm. it's a breaking of the Ten Commandments. But even if you don't really assent to that being a Ten Commandment that's broken, but you assent to you know it's wrong. And so you would tell your friend, hey, you really shouldn't do that. Why? Because you know what the consequence is. If you get caught doing that, the consequence of that is what? Jail time, mm -hmm. right? And so you want to keep your friend from jail time. So love says, I want to try to keep you from the consequence of that. And so that's the difference. Like the consequence is what we're trying to help our brother or sister struggling with any sin, right? It doesn't matter what the sin is, but as a church, what we should be doing is helping one another love one another and helping them stay on the straight and narrow because that's what the word says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's super important for the church. You know, we're kind of told that we have two options in our culture. Either we can be bigoted and hate-filled and angry. I had a teen who was trying to minister to their friend who was a part of the LGBT community and kids were throwing trash on them. Um, and I asked, you know, unfortunately, sometimes as a pastor, you ask questions that you regret. And I just said, you know, do those kids go to youth group somewhere? And their answer was, yeah, they go to such and such youth group. Thankfully, it wasn't mine, but as the church, we can't, we can't bully, we can't hate. We need to see people to be loved in Jesus' name. Um, at the other end, there's other churches going to, you know, we're going to affirm and we're going to tell everybody that everything they do is okay because we don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. And the goal of the church is to not embrace any culture, whether it's a culture that says this is weird and strange and we hate them, um, or a culture that says everything is okay. Our goal is to follow Jesus who loved everybody. I am fully confident if Jesus was a pastor at a church, it would be full of LGBTQ people, of straight people, of all kinds of people um, laying down who they are yes. to follow Jesus. And I think that bottom line is what you just said at the tail end. They lay down yeah. who they are because everybody that comes to Christ, Christ will change you. That is because we become born again, we become new, we have new, a new mind, new thinking, we have, the Bible calls it, the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And, um, and this is what we all must understand. If a murderer comes, if an abortionist comes, Christ will change them. And, and, and isn't, it, isn't it amazing how many Christians are more comfortable going into prison to do prison ministry than they are with people caught in sexual sin yeah, or addiction yeah, issues? Yeah, yeah. We're, we really struggle to walk with people lovingly over the long haul to maintain truth right. and yet still love. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's take this up a little bit more, but we need to take a break right now. We'll be right back in just a moment. Stay with us. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back with more discussion. And um, as we're looking at this issue here, homosexuality, there is, um, that you, you, you hit the key in, in one of the verses you read, where man is suppressing the truth. And it's not just on that issue, but it's a number of sinful issues where society does not want the truth. They don't want to hear it. And if you come with the truth, you're labeled as being a bigot, 
you know, that kind of thing, and, 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 and being hateful. But in verses, in verses 16 and 17, of John, John 3, 16 and 17, when the Lord says that uh, he sent his son into the world not to condemn it, but to save it, see, trying to save it from that condemnation, trying to save it from the um, consequences. That's the word I was looking for, trying to save it from the consequences. Is anybody dealing with the consequences? I isn't that important to, 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 to stress that I'm mentioning this not as being hateful toward you, but there are consequences for doing this. Yeah, there's, a, there's consequences to every single sin. Yes. You know, yes. Um, and it's sin that separates us from God. It's sin that leads us to death, okay? Um, and there are other consequences that may be, you know, uh, in place, uh, depending on the sin that's committed, that, um, that we'll have to deal with here in this lifetime that, that may cause great problems for us. Um, but there's always consequences to sin. Yeah. And we as, we as uh, Christians um, should be looking to people because of what Christ commands us to do in loving our neighbor. And we should be going uh, to try to help them so that, you know, they, they don't commit a sin and uh, they don't commit sins so that they don't have to suffer the consequences of sins that ultimately might lead to death. You don't, you know, somebody's heading towards uh, a cliff. Um, you don't just wave and say, have a nice trip. You try to help them. You try to bring to their attention that there's danger ahead. You try yes. to bring to their attention that they need to stop and turn around. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's the whole meaning of repentance, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, to turn back around to God uh, from the sinful way. So, um, you know, uh, we need to not just ignore the problem either. We, uh, for us to say to somebody, you know, that you're committing a sin, um, is not that we're trying to put them down, not that we're trying to um, uh, degrade them, but rather, out of love, try to save them. Yes, mm, yes. Right. And, and I think you, you brought up a key point, which is that sin ultimately separates us from God. And we're not just talking about hell, but here and now, we mm -hmm. can have a, right. a, a spiritual experience. We can be around other people who celebrate our lifestyle and miss the greatest love that God wants to give us, which yeah. is his love for us. And we can be sold a false spirituality mm -hmm. right. that we think is a relationship with God. And, and I'm not here in position to judge anybody's faith or anybody's spiritual place. Judge, ultimate judgment is for, for God alone. But we can look at the things that God lines out in scripture and say, these things aren't beneficial yeah. for us yes. to nurture our relationship yeah. with the Lord. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh I was just going to add, I think, for the church to one of the things we need to do to recover our witness in this area, you know, to find that middle road between, you know, not being bigoted or hateful, but also not being affirming and compromise on what Scripture says, is we have to be humble. Mm. Um, I was in a prayer meeting one time and somebody quoted the verse, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves mm -hmm. and pray, I will heal them. Mm -hmm. And the person was preaching on it in this kind of prayer meeting setting and said, you know, our world is falling. We need to get them to humble themselves and pray. <laughs> and somebody in that Bible study pointed out and said, actually, and her name was Pastor Sandra White. I should get Sandra White. I should give credit where credit's due. She said, the Bible doesn't say if the world humbles themselves. It says right. if my people humble yes. themselves. Yes. And so when we repent of our own sin as a church and as individual believers and corporately, that gives us the platform to, if we're going to be tough on our own sin, then to deal with other people's sins. Yeah. Um, until we're willing to do that, I think yeah. that's why the world doesn't want to listen. Very important. It's a good wrap up. Let, let's turn to something else. We, here's another question. This perhaps every bit is controversial. Racial relationships in this country today, mm. we all know what's happening. There's the Black Lives Matter movement and, and different movements that are going about. Here's the question that came in. Is there anything wrong with interracial relationships? Uh, I have a relationship with this gentleman uh, because I'll be speaking at his church in the very near future. There's a relationship there. Is, is, is that wrong? Is it wrong for me to have a relationship with him? Is it wrong for him to have a relationship with me? Is, is interracial marriage wrong? Is having a pastor and parishioner relationship, is that right? Is that wrong? I think actually scripture celebrates it. Yeah. yeah. Scripture unites us. 
There is no longer slave nor free man or woman. And what do we see in, in Pentecost? But people in every tribe and nation are hearing. And Jesus says, You're, yeah. this is what my church is going to look like. Mm -hmm. You're going to go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the othermost parts of the world. Yeah. And everybody's going to be my disciple. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest issue is we have to get past our own biases. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at least I read into the question, maybe that wasn't the question, but what I read into the question was more about interracial marriage or interracial, uh, you know, relationships in that context. And that's an Old Testament idea that sprung up specifically because God had chosen the Hebrew people and mm -hmm. it had nothing to do with their race. It had right. to do with their, their faith, their, faith. their right. religion. Yeah. 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 And so because he knew that if they got into uh, yes, uh, other cultures, it was a caution about their gods being introduced yeah. to that relationship yeah. into that family, exactly. into that community it had nothing to do with with race. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was nations. It wasn't yeah. race. It was nations. And specifically, like you said, in a culture where the concern was to marry somebody outside of there is to is going to be to also worship their gods. Right. Mm -hmm. The biggest, I think the biggest admonition for <clears throat> who you should, you know, be involved with and who you shouldn't is <laughs> was about being yoked with an unbeliever. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, right. that, that was a bigger right. problem than anything else. Yeah. 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 Yes. You know, um, it doesn't matter. Yeah. about what yeah. a person's color or nationality or any of that is. Right, because yeah. God said, don't go down and marry with them because you will end up worshiping and serving their gods. Mm -hmm. When in fact they disobeyed that, but Did they? in fact it came yeah. true. But, but the yeah. reality is, let's not tap dance around the issue. Society at large and many churches still have issues right. with interracial marriages and Sometimes it's just we have ignorance about people from different cultures and right. what they bring to the table and how we relate. We don't know how to relate. Yeah. Um, and, and so there is that issue. And I think churches have to address it. It's one of those topics we don't like talking about, but we probably need to talk about yeah. more and how we're welcoming, not just with people with certain sins, but with certain lifestyles or shades of skin tone or dialects or backgrounds mm -hmm. or ways of dress or whatever it might be. I think I dare say too what you just said. Now there's churches today. If they were to look at the day of Pentecost mm. and saw mm -hmm. all those cultures come together, right. it just popped the accord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'd have to say I'd have to go to my default Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is for the saints of God to dwell together in unity. Yeah. It doesn't make any distinction in that. And, and God actually in verse four, he commands his blessing upon that unity. And it really is irregardless of race or anything yep. like that. Right. It's God's people. And it goes back to the issue of faith, really. So good. so good, guys. Oh, I love. So the scriptures that always come to my mind at this is in Ephesians chapter two. It says that through Christ, the walls that have divided mm -hmm. us have been broken down. Mm -hmm. When you look at the New Testament about who you should date, it says, do they belong to the Lord? Yeah. A fellow believer right. and their character is a lot more important um, than all the other things our society might try to attach to it. And then in chapter two, it says the walls have been broken down. In chapter four, it says, therefore live a life worthy of the calling that you've received. And so the church has to model that the walls have been broken down, but sometimes we're still standing at the same place, staring at each other awkwardly and not taking hold of the reconciliation Christ has for us. And then in Revelation chapter seven, it gives a vision of, you know, of what worship is going to be like someday before God in the, in the renewed heavens and earth. And it says people of every tribe, tongue and language singing yeah. together. So if somebody has a problem with interracial relationships or interracial worship or multicultural worship, you are going to be very, very upset when you get to the renewed heavens and earth because it's coming. It's coming. Amen. Very good. And let's turn to one last topic here. And I'll start with you, Mr. Youth Pastor. Um, Sounds good. How can a teenager share his or her faith in a public school, especially now that we are living in a time where everything is accepted, even if it isn't right? Yeah. So I would honestly just say, just do it. Um, you know, I think it's 1 Peter 3.15, don't quote me on this, but it says, you know, always be prepared to give a reason for the hope you have and do this with gentleness and respect. If you are gentle and respectful, people are more than happy to listen to you if you're willing to listen to them. 
And so I think one of the things people in our culture right now um, really don't argue against a whole lot is your experience. And so if you have a teen who has a, a situation of where Jesus changed their life, share that with your friends. You share the things that are important. If your friend doesn't like running, but you love running, they're gonna put up with it and listen to it. How much more, if Jesus is important to you, should you talk about him? And so by all means, share. Um, that being said, you know, you can pick and choose your battles with friends. You should be introducing them to Jesus and not making them, you know, agree with every single stance you have on the Bible first or bringing up that politically divisive topic. You know, so for example, we talked earlier about uh, homosexuality. When I meet a new person, I'm going to tell them about how wonderful Jesus is. If they ask me about homosexuality, I'll talk about it, but it's not going to be my, my, that's not the first thing I'm going to mention. Anybody okay. else? Yeah, I would say allow the Holy Spirit to lead, right? Mm -hmm. Allow the Holy Spirit to bring up the topic. And the best thing that you can possibly do is just live your faith. Right. Just live consistently. And when people ask you, why do you do that? Or, you know, why do you read it? Or, you know, what, what, what is on your mind when you came? Or why, do you, why does your schedule have you going to youth group or church on Sunday? Or, hey, I can't spend the night. Or, yeah, I can spend the night. Or you can spend the night at my house, but we're going to church. Or whatever it is. Your patterns and your routines and your behaviors, that's a witness, how you live your life. Right. And I would also encourage you, get around some adults that are living their faith is a witness to the culture as well and see how they do it at work. See how they do it out in the community. Because a lot of times Christians just stick with Christian people. Right. And a lot of our teenagers mm -hmm. don't have very good examples of what it means to be evangelical other than maybe dropping a track in front mm -hmm. of somebody. But they really don't have a good example of what it means to do life on life or relational evangelism or, or just being consistent of living in a broken culture. Yeah, and I'll mm -hmm. piggyback off of that, Pastor Rich. Uh, and Jesus said in Acts 1-8 that you shall be my witnesses. So that means wherever mm -hmm. you are. And he kind of spells it out there, right? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. So wherever you are, we're called to be a witness. And mm -hmm. that's really the primary thing Jesus wants us to be. So if you're a student in a school, we're called to be a witness in school. Mm -hmm. And how can you be a witness? You can love your neighbor, which that's is it. the fellow students. You can help them with their projects. You can be kind. You know, you can be honest. You know, you can be trustworthy and, and dependable. You can, you know, you can live your life with some integrity uh, as you model your faith um, in that way. And, uh, and there might be those who will, who will ask, you know, why, why, why are you the way you are? Why do you yeah. do, you know, why are you nice to this person who's always mean to you? Mm. Well, because your faith calls you to be nice, Amen. you know. Excellent. Well, listen, we've got maybe about 45 seconds or so to go. Anybody have a wrap-up comment real quick about this? Uh, well, I would just piggyback uh, upon what Bill said, and, and that's that many times when you do that, when you live the Christian life in front of people, you'll be ridiculed in the group. Yeah. Right. But that kid will come up to you privately afterwards and ask the question and be open to that conversation. Don't just dismiss them because they're struggling. They're not at where they need to be spiritually yet and be patient. And when tragedy strikes, they'll be the person that will come and ask for prayer. All right. Thank you very much. That'll wrap it up. Gentlemen, we appreciate all of the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding that you've shared with us today and hope to have you back soon. That's our program for today. We'll be back again next week. And until then, I am Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>